Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. This is the NFL on EA Sports. See Tua Tunga Bailoa and the Miami Dolphins taking on Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. We are about 15 or so miles northwest of world famous Miami Beach as we are set for football at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago. The Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the New England Patriots. Jake Bailey ready to do the honors. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. Taken in at the three. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Here is Tua Tunga Bailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. And for all the collegiate success he had, highest passer efficiency rating by a mile. He's a guy who's had his share of detractors at the professional level, but I do like his poise, I do like his moxie, and I love his accuracy. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now the former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That old line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Two and now on first down. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Lawrence Guy able to get in there and drop him for a loss. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. So a tough early challenge here, second and long after the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Tua, and that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. You definitely would have liked to have hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up, and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back, and they are coming. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Patriots are going to get the football here as they force the INT on the game's opening drive. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They'll be led by the Heisman finalist from a season ago, the rookie from Alabama, Mac Jones. 
Mac Jones absolutely believed in himself coming out of high school. Went to Alabama despite the fact there were many high-profile quarterbacks already on the roster and blossomed into a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final season with 41 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Steady, consistent as a passer, doesn't have the biggest cannon for an arm, but can stretch the field and lay those passes in on the deep ball. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Again, it's Harris on second down, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Now Jones. He's going to look deep down the field. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. And the Dolphins are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 38. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. Six yards left on second down. From the gun, it's Tua. And it's incomplete. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And he goes down, it's a Patriot sack. Matthew Judon in there to take him down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Wait 
So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep for the Patriots, Gunnar Olszewski. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Patriots take over. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, <laughs> turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And some room to run now. And he takes it all the way down to the three. 89 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. So down inside the five-yard line, I have to say, really just a poor job defensively there. You're exactly right. As a former defensive back, that was not played well at all. But give credit to the offense and give credit to the guy running the football. He gets it down all the way inside the five. First and goal from the three. They'll try to run with Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Pats on just two plays have taken the lead. So the big play to kick off the drive set them up first and goal, and they're able to cash in right away on play number two. I think I'm starting to understand more and more when we get ready to do games and we meet with coaches, why they talk about big plays, explosive plays, and how it sets them up for success, because that's exactly how they're able to score on this one. We saw the touchdown. We saw the payoff. But, of course, that big, long chunk play is what got them in position. Fulk connects on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Well, it wasn't a one-play drive, but I think they'll take it. The scoring summary, two plays and into the end zone. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. to throw. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to pass, Tua. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. <laughs> On play action. Here's Tua. And this is going to be incomplete. And what 
did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll run with Stevenson to begin the drive. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is, and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance, they're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Throwing Jones. Hunter Henry brings it in. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. So from the thirty six now, first and ten. They hand this off to Harris. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. 99 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. On second down now. It's Stevenson. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. It's a gain of three. Brings up third and inches. Looking to throw. Jones. Open man is Jacoby Myers. He's got it. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now a first down carry for Harris. And forget that 100-yard rushing game, at least for the moment, as he'll lose yardage here and fall back under the century mark for the game. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly.
Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Back to throw. Jones. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time. They ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the gun, Jones. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 38. Out of the gun, they give it to Stevenson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Off play action. Jones finding room to the 20. Oh, a nifty juke there. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Nelson Aguilar, 34 yards. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown interception ratio is what? Three to one for the best quarterbacks. But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Now full for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. just outside the goal line and able to get this out to the 25. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's from one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. He'll find Williams on the slant. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Tua. And the timing a bit off that 
time as that one falls to the ground. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back work in sync. Only way to play good defense. To throw again on second down. Tua, and that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. The Dolphins on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Here's Tua. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Second and 10. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 12-yard line. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. First foray into the red zone for Miami. It's first and 10 from the 12. Locates Williams along the sideline. Pass is complete. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Tua sets up to pass it. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins able to get this back within a touchdown. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in it. And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play. All the views coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in balance, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if the ball comes together. a touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right Jason Sanders now for the extra point and that one makes it 14 to 7 so that one an eight play drive it spans 75 yards and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins
after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. On the return is J.J. Taylor. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Here's Jones on first down. And yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Second down at five. Blitz forthcoming as he'll look to throw. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. from the gun. Jones throwing the out route incomplete. That's Myers. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. That's caught left side, Myers with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Back to throw again. He's got it complete to Aguilar. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And the Dolphins force the turnover. And they'll take over at the 10. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on. His teammates are going to check on it. Because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. 
So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everybody to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard hitting affair to this point, and you gotta expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. Okay, coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Well, the Patriots take it over to start quarter number three, and they've got the lead CD. What do you expect from them in the second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, OK, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Looking to throw. Jones. And they're able to get this one across the 35. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw, Jones. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. The man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. To throw once more on second and 10. Jones, and that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. They'll try and run for the first with Stevenson. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. 
Looking to throw. Jones over the middle complete. That's Henry. A gain of six there on first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second and four. Back to throw. Jones. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 21. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Jones now on first and 10. Harris has it over the middle. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Second down at Stevenson. And he'll get it here to the 10 yard line. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense. So, not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. On the give, this is Harris. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Second and nine. Looking to throw. Jones. That is caught at the seven yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync. Stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Yeah, this is going to depend on the spot, but I believe he might be a few inches short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They run for it with Harris. And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Patriots take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Well, this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. On for the extra point is Folk. Yeah. 
It's good, and it is now 21-7. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 26. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. This is Gaskin on the carry, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Second and seven. They'll set up a throw. They'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Two and now on first down. That's caught Waddle on the left side. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? Not like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. From the 36, Tua. Over the middle, he's got Gesicki, the big 6-5 tight end. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. On second and goal, Tua. Now he'll escape, and he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Tua Tungabailoa taking it in for four yards out. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was to a tongue of Iloa who called his own number and finished it off with the touchdown run. Taylor now from the end zone. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Patriots ready to try again on offense. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Harris going to get it again on second down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining.
And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. A give to Harris. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. from the gun on third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The Patriots in the victory formation as they'll take the knee. Down to a knee goes Jones, and that should just about seal it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. 